From the joys of motherhood to the challenges that women face throughout their lives, we're diving deep into the world of obstetrics, gynecology, and urogynecology. So sit back, relax, and get ready to be informed and empowered. Today, we have the privilege of welcoming not one, but two highly respected and experienced experts in the field, an obstetrician gynecologist and a urogynecologist who have dedicated their careers to improving women's health. They are here to answer your burning questions, debunk myths, and shed light on the latest advancements in the medical world. This is You and Your Health. You and Your Health is brought to you by Doctors Hospital Health System. At Doctors Hospital, our lamp just got brighter. The Loyalty Advantage Membership Program now has three unique plans to choose from. From LAMP prepaid with free prime care visits and service line discounts, LAMP insured with copay waivers and zero upfront collections at the ER and inpatient services, or our new LAMP access, a free plan that offers 10% off lab, pharmacy, and imaging. LAMP has a plan for everyone. To sign up, visit our website or give us a call. Doctors Hospital, trusted and best care now. Welcome to You and Your Health, everyone. Again, I'm Alexis Burrows, and I'm today's guest host. Here with me to talk about women's health is obstetrician and gynecologist, Dr. Dorita Francis Phillips. Welcome to the show, Dr. Phillips. Thank you for having me, Alexis. Dr. Francis Phillips, women in the Bahamas and around the world have more and more to be mindful of when it comes to their health. From things like endometriosis and polycystic ovarian syndrome to uterine fibroids and urinary incontinence, it is becoming increasingly important that women engage with their doctor to keep on top of their health concerns. We hear all the time about the importance of regular checkups and screenings. Can you elaborate on why that is important in women's health? So it's always important for patients to have a regular examination or visit with their gynecologist. And this can be done yearly um, before the onset of any concerns or any problems. This actually fosters or develops a relationship, number one, with the physician and their patient. It also gives the physician a time to ascertain the history from their patients, so it gives the physician a time to get to know the patient to determine if there are any current risk factors for any diseases that may pop up eventually or even existing disease conditions. So it's a good time for primary prevention to also give counseling and to advise patients on how to utilize basically good lifestyle techniques to promote globally a healthy way of life. So what are some of the most common concerns raised by your patients with regards to their health? That may depend on the age group of the patients. Um, your very young patients, may their concern typically may just be contraception and contraception counseling. Um, your middle-aged patients may be concerns with regards to pregnancy and childbearing pl or childbearing planning. Um, some of the more common gynecological conditions I would say that I see tends to be more towards patients that have abnormal uterine bleeding. Mm -hmm. So concerns with regards to their menstrual cycle health, also conditions such as chronic pelvic pain, conditions related to PCOS or definitely endometriosis um, and uterine fibroids. So you mentioned endometriosis and this was a, a topic of recent interest. Can you explain briefly what endometriosis is and what are some of the warning signs that women should be aware of? Right, so endometriosis actually is a very common condition that tends to occur in women of reproductive age group. Um, we're seeing more and more patients with this concern recently. Mm -hmm. And in the month of March, we dedicated a whole segment towards educating the women in the Bahamas about this condition. So endometriosis really is the existence of a disease where tissue that normally would line the uterine cavity may actually be present outside of the uterus. So on organs such as the fallopian tubes, the ovary, or in other areas of the pelvis and even more distant organs such as the lungs and a previous um, surgical scar like a uterine um, scar or even a patient that may have had a vaginal delivery and what we call an episiotomy mm -hmm. where a cut was made in the vagina to um, basically assist with delivery. Sometimes you can have these endometriotic tissues being deposited at these sites. Um, so typically, how do these patients prevent, present? Um, these patients may actually have pain. So it's usually the um, common conditions or the common 
Symptoms would be um, pelvic pain, particularly pain with the onset of their menstruation. Mm -hmm. um, this pain may start a day or two before the onset of the menses, and it may last for most women throughout the menses or just in the beginning part. Um, it tends to ease up as the menstruation basically ceases. Um, that is called dysmenorrhea, so it's a secondary dysmenorrhea. Patients also may have basically chronic pelvic pain where they suffer from pain in their pelvic area, which is the area just below the umbilicus, maybe continuously. And more commonly, they can have what we call dyspareunia, which is pain during intercourse. Sometimes also patients with endometriosis can have other symptoms that may mimic other diseases. And so it may make the diagnosis of endometriosis a little bit more challenging. These patients can have symptoms that resemble those of gastrointestinal diseases. They may have nausea, constipation, diarrhea. They may also have pain when they're um, trying to pass the fecal matter. They may have um, symptoms that resemble urinary tract issues, so frequent urination or painful urination. And these types of symptoms may actually worsen during the menstrual cycle itself. So those are some of the more common issues um, where endometriosis can actually also create issues for women with regards to their fertility, and that's also a main concern. So looking at you know, the, the field of gynecology and obstetrics, there's been so many advancements in technology and healthcare on a broad scale. Can you explain any particular advancements in your area that you're excited about? Medicine is growing every day. We're a field that we can never stop studying. Um, research is ongoing um, and it's always important for all physicians, gynecologists as well as all other areas of specialties to continuously engage in the onset of medical education and training. Quite recently I've actually engaged in a course for laparoscopic surgery and I think that this is actually a good way that most gynecologists are moving forward so that we can offer procedures to patients that are less invasive associated with less post-operative pain conditions and um, shorter hospital course, hospital stay as we know hospital course sometimes can be prolonged and expensive and it actually offers patients the ability to return to their regular routine of life quicker. So we're, off, we're looking into other areas of laparoscopic surgery, be it for patients such as those with endometriosis, where we can actually do a diagnostic laparoscopy, which is not as long or detailed, but it actually allows us to go in and have a look for patients who may be presenting with symptoms suggestive of endometriosis. It also can offer the opportunity of biopsy and endometriotic um, lesions, and also surgery can be performed at the same time. So it can be, in a sense, um, curative, diagnostic and curative. You talked about um, technology, obviously, which is a, a critical component of any discussion that, that doctor's hospital likes to, to kind of engage in. But one of the others is access. So why do you think it's important to have access to an obstetrician and gynecologist through NHI? We're basically in a time where NHI has come along that has afforded basically patients um, different options of health care. And so we have recently preferred to basically give patients a choice. Um, open up accessibility to healthcare is important for all patients from all walks of life. And so having the opportunity to serve as an NHI physician offering obstetrical care, it allows patients basically another route. It allows patients basically other choices. Sometimes it may be difficult for patients to access our government clinics um, just because maybe the load or location, um, maybe because of their time of work. So being able to have an OB service at Doctors Hospital through NHI, I think allows patients basically just another option to access care and to know that you are accessing care under basically utilizing physicians that are highly trained mm -hmm. in both normal obstetrical care and also high risk. Well, Dr. Francis Phillips, we have to take a quick break, but we have a lot more to talk about. You're watching You and Your Health. We'll be right back. Whether you're battling a chronic condition or offsetting a new injury, 
Doctors oh. Hospital's comprehensive rehab services offer the help you need you now. Need to go to doctors. Three advanced facilities at Collins Avenue, Carmichael Road in Cable Beach means your personalized plan for care is just a visit away. From physiotherapy to occupational therapy and speech and language pathology, our team approach is all about rebuilding together. For a full list of services, visit doctorshospital.com forward slash rehabilitation. Doctors Hospital, trusted in best care now. Isn't your health worth it? Islands of the Bahamas, fly away. Welcome back to You and Your Health. If you're just now tuning in, I'm Alexis Burrows, the guest host for today's show. I'm also the marketing director at Doctors Hospital. It's Women's Health Month, and we're talking about women's health with obstetrician and gynecologist, Dr. Dorita Francis Phillips. Before the break, we discussed women's health from a broad perspective. But now, as we dive deeper into our conversation, we are joined by urogynecologist, Dr. Laura DeRosier. Welcome to the show. Good day, Alexis. It's a pleasure to be here. Awesome. So Dr. DeRosier, what is urogynecology, and how does it differ from an obstetrician and gynecologist? So your gynecologists are either OBGYN trained um, physicians that have gone through residency uh, versus urology trained physician. Both of them can go through the same pathway. Mm -hmm. Typically an OBGYN training is four years and then you'll do an additional three years of urogyn or FPMRS, female pelvic medicine and reconstructive surgery. Right. Long words, we, call, we shorten it by calling it urogyn. Um, and if you do urology track, then you'll do five years of urology and then two additional years. In all, it's seven years training mm -hmm. uh, to be considered uh, a urogynecologist. Okay. Now, you know, you and I have spoken in different forums before, and you've talked many times about the concerns of ur urinary incontinence. So what are some warning signs that women should be aware of? Great question. So urinary incontinence um, is something that is very, very common. It's sort of the silent, um, uh, uh, the, one of the biggest silent diseases that we have in our societies. And we don't talk about it. We know that 40% of women by age 40 have some sort of urinary incontinence. And it varies, right? So you can have things like urinary urgency, frequency. I did a talk recently and I talked to, to the ladies and I said, you know, we start by, okay, I'm going to just plan out. I'm going to, the, to, I'm going to church or I'm going shopping. I'm going to go to the restroom before and then it's and then it becomes I'm going before I go out and then once I reach where I'm going uh, I'm going to go to the restroom again and then we start mapping once you're there you need to know where all the restrooms are until going to the bathroom becomes preeminent right um, so that is one of the issues so we tend to lump urinary incontinence into a category where women are always leaking it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to leak. Urinary urgency where you can't defer the, the need to go to the restroom is something that we need to consider. Frequency where you're going to the restroom more than eight times a day is something that we need to consider. And certainly um, urinary incontinence where you're leaking uh, either because you're urgently trying to make it to the restroom and can't make it in time or leaking with activity with cough, laugh and sneeze. Now there, these are just two of the um, various types of incontinence. We can talk about overflow or neurogenic bladder. I'll focus on both uh, urge incontinence and stress incontinence because they are by, by far the, the ones that affect people the most. Dr. Francis Phillips, wh where does the role of an OBGYN and a urogynecologist intersect? So many times we would see patients um, as a routine, as your gynecologist, just for routine examination or your annual well woman's visit. Mm -hmm. And at this time, we, are, we may discover from the patient a history of some of those symptoms that Dr. Desrosier just mentioned, mm -hmm. where either they're having difficulty holding their urine or they're suffering from issues such as urgency. Or even sometimes as we're performing a pelvic examination, we may actually discover that these patients may have um, other reasons for concern, such as a prolapse, where part of the genital tract is actually protruding through or into or through the vaginal. And so 
basically these are some of the reasons that we would base we would incorporate our management as a gynecologist along with having additional assistance from the urogynecologist. So Dr. Francis Phillips, if you're seeing a patient, how do you know when it's time to refer them to say a, a Dr. DeRosier? Sometimes a patient may present um, and you may be able to manage them conservatively. So you may be able to offer them um, basically some modalities that can actually assist. And after a period of trying some conservative measures, mm -hmm. it's not, say for instance, it's not working or the patient desires more um, further intervention or you're considering surgical intervention. Mm -hmm. Typically for patients with issues of long standing incontinence or patients that may have other pelvic floor concerns or patients that actually may have um, a prolapse. These are patients or patients that have issues as a result of straining or constipation. Um, we may actually need to have the urogynecologist basically assist us with surgical management. So this last question I have is for both of you and I, I'd like you to answer first Dr. DeRosier. Um, what role does environmental factors like diet and stress um, play in some of the gynecological disorders that women face? That's a great question because I think it, it goes into how can we prevent things as well. So I think it's important for us to know that whatever we put in our body will have an effect. So. Um, not having fiber, for example, not having enough food, fruits and vegetables that provide the fiber will impact constipation, how we're able to um, control our bowels. We know that chronic constipation is an independent risk factor for prolapse. That means when we've taken out all the other risk factors, which include you know, um, the number of pregnancies, uh, the, the mode of delivery, the length of the second stage of labor, which are all strong indicators for development of prolapse, constipation is an independent risk factor. Um, chronic heavy lifting is another one um, that is very important. Patients who go through long periods of time and hold their urine, for example, that's a no-no. That can actually impact urinary urgency and frequency in the long term. So all of these can have, uh, have an impact um, f on your urogynecologic health. I'd also like to add to that, of course, um, I always take everything back to lifestyle, mm -hmm. um, particularly patients where we are not too careful about what we consume, what we eat, and so obesity is also another risk factor for um, incontinence. So I basically would start with that in that we can actually prevent um, some of these conditions if we just basically change our diets. Um, also exercise is important and so with a healthy lifestyle incorporating both dietary and, and physical activity can actually limit some of these conditions from, from developing and or progressing. Um, the other things such that we may not be able to avoid such as childbirth, sometimes these may be risk factors, particularly if we have used, utilized, assisted deliveries, um, these may actually give rise to other pelvic floor injuries that may present later on in life. Um, there is a role to play with smoking, um, so smoking um, cessation should also be encouraged with our patients. So when we are seeing our patients, it's important to identify these risk factors that if they're not causing an issue at present, they may present later down. Thank you Dr. Francis Phillips for joining us today. Dr. DeRosier, I have a few more questions for you when we get back from the break. This is You and Your Health. We'll be right back. At Doctors Hospital, our lamp just got brighter. The Loyalty Advantage Membership Program now has three unique plans to choose from. From lamp prepaid with free prime care visits and service line discounts, lamp insured with copay waivers and zero upfront collections at the ER and inpatient services, or our new lamp access, a free plan that offers 10% off lab, pharmacy, and imaging. Lamp has a plan for everyone. To sign up, visit our website or give us a call. Doctors Hospital, trusted and best care now. Whether you're battling a chronic condition or offsetting a new injury, Doctors Hospital's comprehensive rehab services offer the help you need now. Go to doctors. Three advanced facilities at Collins Avenue, Carmichael Road, in Cable Beach means your personalized plan for care is just a visit away. From physiotherapy to occupational therapy and speech and language pathology, our team approach is all about rebuilding together. For a full list of services, visit doctorshosp.com forward slash rehabilitation. Doctors Hospital, trusted and best care now. Isn't your health worth it?
Welcome back to You and Your Health. I'm Alexis Burroughs, today's guest host. Our second guest, Dr. Laura DeRosier, is still here, and we're wrapping up our discussion on women's health. Dr. DeRosier, it's reported that up to 45% of women suffer from some sort of urinary incontinence. How does urogynecology address pelvic floor disorders such as this and pelvic organ prolapse? So in fact, you know, it's probably a little higher. I think we all know that incontinence is one of those areas that there is a tendency not to discuss it. And so it really is up to us to sort of tease that information out. So we do know that 40% of women by age 40 will have some incontinence. It's probably a lot higher. We think that it's likely 60% by age 65. So uh, it, it encompasses so such a large part of our life um, in terms of you know, monitoring patients and evaluating them, it's really important to discuss with them early on you know, that it is not normal. I think there's a tendency in, uh, in our societies in general to just say it's a part of aging. Uh, and I like to say to my patients, you know, we would never say to someone, you know, it, diabetes is just a part of aging. We're not going to do anything about it. Hypertension is a, is, it happens as we age. We're not going to have an intervention. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we shouldn't say that about incontinence either, because incontinence is not just the loss of, of urine. It actually, it affects women on a much deeper level on their ability to socialize. You'll find a lot of women will become uh, less likely to socialize because they will they will fear having a moment of incontinence um, uh, with that. Can you discuss the role of pelvic floor exercises such as Kegel exercises in managing and preventing urogynecological conditions? So Kegel's exercises, and you know, I think any, anyone who's seen or have had an, you know, a, a baby, they've been told, oh, when you're done, go home and do Kegels, right? Kegels exercises, I tend not to use the term Kegels because it's thrown around so much that it's lost its essence. I like to call it pelvic floor exercises. And I think that, you know, the best way for us to, um, to sort of compare it is what happens to your calves? Like we all see, can see what's happening with our calves when we lift our leg and when we, um, when we flex our legs. You can see that those muscles are contracting and relaxing. So similarly, Kegel's exercises or pelvic floor exercises allow us to do the same thing to the pelvic floor muscles. Now it's important to, um, to, to just look at the anatomy real quick. The pelvic floor muscles are consistent of uh, the levator ani muscles and through those muscles, the urethra, the vagina, and the rectum go through those muscles. So you can imagine if there is dysfunction in those muscle fibers, either that they're tonically contracted or that they're relaxed or even torn, uh, that that will cause dysfunction with the area that involves it. So if it's closer towards the urethra, then patients who have, uh, patients can have symptoms of stress incontinence if there's an issue there. If it's closer to the vagina, then patients can have issues with prolapse. If it's closer toward the rectum, then you can th see things like a rectocele or you can see things like defecatory dysfunction or constipation. So focusing on the, um, the, the teaching of strengthening those pelvic floor muscles is vital. It's crucial as an initial evaluation, an initial way to, to, um, uh, to demonstrate to patients how to care uh, for themselves, essentially. My issue with just telling patients to go do Kegels is that we know, our data shows, 60% of patients do them wrong. They push rather than inhale and lift up. And when you do that, you actually worsen the condition. So I would advise um, that we don't just tell patients to just go do, do Kegels, that we assess the patient to make sure that they're doing it correctly. If they are in that 40% that's doing it correctly, then we teach them 10 times in the morning, do cycles of 10 times in the morning and 10 times at night. We would also teach them how to do long contraction versus versus uh, short twitches, mm -hmm. which also is important because there are different muscle fibers that we're affecting that way. Uh, if they're unable to do it appropriately, then I think we need to put them on a, uh, a regimen where we start pelvic floor therapy with a physical therapist that's trained in pelvic floor therapy. So what are some risk factors that contribute to the development of urogyne conditions and how can women mitigate those risks? Another great question. I think we've touched on a lot of those throughout this discussion, but 
certainly incontinence, urge incontinence, uh, and uh, stress incontinence. Stress incontinence is leakage with cough, laugh, and sneeze. Typically, uh, you'll see it on patients who are a little on the younger side, patients who have had a vaginal delivery. Most women who've had a vaginal delivery will have some episode of stress incontinence in their postpartum period. Um, th therefore, Kegel's exercises during that period, working with a pelvic floor therapist, in my opinion, is, is crucial in helping them regain strength um, and knowing how to, that will help them actually during their, their, uh, their, their next pregnancies as well. Um, other things like prolapse <clears throat> can be seen and things that we can do, certainly avoiding heavy lifting, if there's any chronic constipation, avoiding chronic straining, mm -hmm. um, those can all uh, be impactful. Um, for patients who, are, who have early onset uh, prolapse, they can feel it, they sort of know it's there. Before it worsens, then, tr and you don't want to have surgical intervention, then I certainly think that use the use of a pessary. These are all, uh, there's are plastic rings that can be placed, essentially silicone-based rings that can be placed in the vagina, and that can be placed by the gynecologist. My gynecologist colleagues are, are very apt in using pessaries, and they can fit you, the patient, and, you, and, and they will place the pessary in, in the vagina, and that will help to suspend the, um, the tissue and help decrease the progression now, it's not going to stop the prolapse or fix the problem, but certainly will help decrease progression. Well, my last question for you, can you explain the importance then of early detection and intervention for these types of issues? Early detection is crucial. The, our ability to help a patient is so much better, our, our, our um, success rates are so much better if we have patients that are coming at an earlier time frame. I always like to use the, um, the, uh, the analogy of diabetes, right? Um, it's going to be very hard for, for an endocrinologist to have a good impact for a patient if the patient comes in already with diabetic foot ulcers, they've already got gangrene, you know, then we're talking about surgical intervention. However, if somebody comes in, their diabetes is not controlled, but they can start, it's a difference of being able to start on oral medications versus starting on insulin versus needing another higher, you know, surgical uh, intervention. Likewise, when someone comes in on earlier phases of their disease process, we have more options. We can treat with non-surgical, uh, not, with not large interventions, things like pelvic floor, therapy actually will work for them if they come in earlier in the disease process. And then it allows us to do lifestyle modifications, which will have a huge impact. Whereas if we come in later towards the disease progression, then our, our hands are tied. The, the uh, recommendations that we can make are limited because we've already seen uh, the last stages of the disease process. Awesome information. Uh, I want to thank you, Dr. DeRosier, for coming on to the show today. Um, excellent discussion, both with you and Dr. Phillips. So thank you so much. Our pleasure. All right. And for anyone who may be interested in seeing either Dr. DeRosier or Dr. Francis Phillips, can reach out to Doctors Hospital at our location at Centerville Medical Center, which you can contact at 302-3250. Or if you want to book online, you can visit clinics.doctorshosp.com. Um, and on that same website, you'd be able to sign up for NHI for Dr. Francis Phillips as well. Um, it has been a pleasure hosting today's show. Don't forget to follow You and Your Health on social media and tune in next week for another exciting show. Thanks for watching.